Hi guys, number one Marmite fan here. This is a True Believers number one, and I have no clue what the logic is for True Believers. Like this is Avengers Ronin, and it's got like Echo as Ronin. So, or did they, is that why they had it out? Because Hawkeye was Ronin in Endgame, or I guess Hawkeye puts on a ninja outfit. So it's like, it's the origin of Hawkeye as Ronin. I don't really get the logic, and it's like part four of the new Avengers. Uh, so I guess this gives me a chance to talk about Civil War. Oh, and also, Marvel, learn to actually credit your writer and artist. Don't retweet without crediting the artist. So the story is by Brian Michael Bendis. The pencils and inks are by uh, Le Nil Yu. And uh, he kind of has a grungy, ugly style, but I really loved it for this issue because Civil War was really grungy and dark. And I feel like it's a perfect blend of style to story content. And I, I actually genuinely admire it. It's just, it's not a good style for like upbeat comic, superhero comics, and this is not an upbeat superhero comic. So I remember Civil War, the comic series came out when I was in college and, you know, the comic nerds were like talking it up, saying this is the most interesting thing ever. And just hearing the description of it, I wasn't really quite on board. So that this was kind of a period where I wasn't like actively reading superhero comics, but I was still casually interested in the characters. And I just didn't like the idea of heroes fighting heroes. And Bendis actually makes fun of heroes fighting heroes in this. I actually said, then I got it from the library, sat down and read it and I enjoyed it. I, I kind of feel like Civil War would, it, would be great as a sort of standalone graphic novel, like Watchmen take on the Avengers. I don't like Civil War as a canon thing that everything else has to build on because you can never go back to slappy, happy, fun time stuff. If, half of if everyone's responsible for killing your friends uh you can't have a happy slappy fun time that's that's beyond a marvel misunderstanding the marvel misunderstanding was always like there was like some innocent misunderstanding the superheroes would fight it out It'd be an awesome fun fight it, it that that's very childlike like the, the two good guys meet they fight each other it's like little john and robin hood and then they go back right back to fighting the bad guys and ben just kind of makes the whole point that they're really depressed they don't know what to do and they feel useless throughout this issue. So I want to just show you a few examples of a lady needle use style. Oh, and I guess Miss Marvel was on the side of Tony Stark. So I guess she's always been on like the side of fascism and totalitarianism. Uh, this face by uh, Dr. Strange is a good example. So kind of grungy, kind of pouty, got a good craggy wrinkle to it and gives them character. Like he also does it to the girls too, which ends up like that would be like against the how to draw comics, the Marvel way style, but he makes it fit with kind of like the grunge and dirt and messiness and scraggliness of the, of this whole world. So I do like Lenny Liu's style. Uh, maybe it's like a one-time thing. Uh, I guess there's kind of like this good question of is Civil War, uh, are you being led to cheer for Tony Stark or are you being led to cheer for Captain America? And I always cheered for Captain America. I kind of assumed that that was the way Marvel was leading the reader to, to towards doing. But then I read a really interesting essay by uh, like some comics egghead arguing that really the whole point of Civil War is to get you to root for uh, Tony and then kind of embrace the uh, like George Bush po post 9-11 kind of neoconservative philosophy that uh, Iron Man represents. I I'll have to dig up that essay sometime if I can find it. But like talky, 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 talky. Oh, jokey, jokey, jokey. Spider-Man, he's such a doofus. He tells terrible jokes. Nah. I think they could have condensed the talky, 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 talky down. Uh, dang! Uh, Aku extra thick! And that, here's another example of kind of like how the faces get a little, they're not wonky, they're, they're sketched out. So there's every line, they, I think it's uh, How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way that says every line you add to the face adds a year to the face. So they all look kind of old and craggy, which isn't pleasant and simple and cartoony. But I do like it for rough and dark and broody and depressing. So here's my problem. So they're going to go off to Japan to save Maya Lopez, who's Echo and Ronan, apparently. And they immediately cut to Clint Barton in a ninja outfit in the setup. And very little is done by Bendis to communicate what the heck is going on. I think you could have taken out two or three pages of talky, talky, talky stuff to have a couple pages of action and setup here. Because what ends up happening is we're having to infer everything without help. So that is Maya, and she's knocked out or beat up behind Doctor Strange. And they're trying to talk to 
Luke Cage is trying to talk to get him out of this situation because Wolverine is injured and bleeding there. None of that is communicated until like I went back and read it like two or three times to figure out the situation. This two-page spread, it's okay. I was able to open it up and figure out, okay, this is a two-page spread. It's not that interesting a composition for a two-page spread. It feels like this could have just been like two regular pages and things like, you know, Wolverine's pointing off in this direction, it, it, the panels aren't like working together to make like this sort of beautiful painted overall whole. Uh, it kind of feels like a big old Sunday strip. So I, I don't know. So it, it, at least it didn't confuse me, but this would have been like a really big opportunity to have like a big old moment, right? Like actually this should have been the two page spread, uh, Dr. Strange getting stabbed. And again, like kind of like an ugly gasping for ear kind of drawing. It's not like a fun, adventure story but it is kind of like a gut-wrenching uh style for a gut-wrenching moment and then spider-man's completely confused they didn't plan this out and i'm confused extra thick that's like the one that's like the, i love that meme there's even another look look at all of this well that's one thing for marvel this is before the sjw area so they they had absolutely no problem uh drawing ladies who were not approved by uh, the anti-male ga male gaze theory uh, board of directors or what have you. And uh, they're all in trouble. Okay. I don't know why they made this a true believers. It doesn't really, like, it, it, it does, Ben just does an okay job of kind of catching you up on the war and who's mad at who and what they're going to do. So he does a good job at that. This seems like a really odd one to just put out. Like, let's put out the three minutes from The Empire Strikes Back of the spaceships fighting uh, without any of the setup for it. Uh, I also think Bendis could have done a lot better job of cutting down the sad, depressing, talky-talky stuff and actually explain the fight scene. So as a standalone comic, eh, I feel like this belongs in a trade where you can kind of get the full context of it. Uh, Lay Neil Yu is clearly the winner here. Come on, Marvel. You have to credit your artists. You have to credit your artists. So, Lay Neil Yu, you are the winner of having a cool, craggy style that fit with the tone of the story. Uh, I'd love to see, like, horror comics by him. I'd love to see kind of dark and gritty deconstruction comics by him. But I don't like seeing dark, dark and gritty deconstruction as part of the main universe. Maybe, maybe that was, like, part of the problem with Marvel Comics before SJW Marvel is when there's things like death isn't permanent uh, or at least uh, when death becomes a joke, like you can bring characters back from the dead. That's like a pulp classic thing is uh, someone could be thought dead and brought back to life, but it has to be special and kind of, there ought to be like a logical explanation for it in, in the, in the world where superhero deaths are a joke. You can't do dark and gritty uh, serious takes anymore. I think you need to do what ifs or else world style comics to explore those kinds of things. So I guess Civil War's kind of been erased by time travel shenanigans. And oh, okay, okay. Earlier in this like Marvel before SJW series, I talked a lot about how to get into comics. I looked at Avengers, uh, I think it was 260 or something. And I said, this is how you get into comics. You get a whole bunch of True Believers books. You find what you like and you follow that. Every one of those older books, like 60s to 80s, would say, go read this, uh, this character, they've got this series, this character, they got this series, all the characters look cool. Uh, the thing about Civil War is it kind of assumes you know the characters and care enough about the characters to follow it. And, you know, I know like about half the characters and then another half I won't know. So it, I think this was kind of an era where Marvel was making comics for its older comic book readers who were longtime fans and weren't necessarily making comics for the kids who were first timers. And it, I, I do like Civil War. I, I, I enjoyed it when I read it, but I just don't want Civil War to be the basis of the Marvel universe. And I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see. So uh, do I recommend it? Yeah. Yeah. For a buck? Yeah. Uh, I think it'd be better to read it in the context of Civil War, so you kind of have a better feel for what's going on. And let Neil use the one. That's it. I've been repeating myself. I'm a Marvel fan. I love you guys. Like, comment, subscribe. Click the bell to receive notifications. Make sure you're still subscribed because of the evil Google overlords. Check out my subscribe star. I love my subscribe star supporters. You help make this channel happen. You help me afford comic books. Thank you to Super Chat donators. I tried a weird thing with Let's Playing where I played Oxen Free. It was kind of boring and talky, 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 talky. So what I think I'll do is I will 
keep doing edited let's plays to keep it nice and tight and you know to the point and uh i'll only do a blind live stream let's play if i'm 100 percent convinced it's going to be like a really fun entertaining game where my reactions will be a lot of fun but otherwise i'm going to try i gotta find some like old school rpgs and stuff to play where i can do some more voice acting that's enough that's the update i survived the tornado love you guys catch you later